Let's finish up our discussion of analytical hierarchy process by looking at this issue of consistency. And a consistent matrix would take care of problems like we ran into, for example, we had three criteria. And we said that A was better than B, and B is better than C. Then it should be inherent that A is better than C. But when we have lots of criteria to keep track of, it's difficult to, to catch those things all the time. And so what we can do is use this consistency ranking to see if that transitive property in the matrix exists. And all that means is that we take care of those inconsistencies where we might miss something like A is better than B, B is better than C, and so A should be better than C. So that's what this consistency check does, is to make sure that the numbers we've entered give us a matrix that makes sense. So let's check for consistency in this last example we did where we had six different criteria and what we had just finished up with in the previous video was determining the weights of material cost, manufacturing cost, um, reliability, durability, time to produce, um, that kind of a thing. So let's uh, go ahead and check for consistency. And again, we had calculated this vector, W, and C, the matrix C, was our 6 by 6 matrix that consisted of our pairwise comparisons. And now we're going to take um, that matrix C, multiply it by the weight vector to get this new uh, vector called W sub S. And lots of talking here, but we'll take that W sub S, W sub S and divide it through by the elements of the vector W, or another way to phrase that is we're going to take the dot product of uh, w s and 1 over w to get this consistency vector and that's where we'll we'll start in getting some numerical measures to help us see if we have a consistent matrix and so uh, we'll take the average of the elements of that consistency vector and that will give us lambda it turns out that lambda is going to be the eigenvalue of that system of um, um, that's matrix system and so I'll, I'll show you a little bit about that in just a second but the consistency index, we take lambda, or the eigenvalue, minus the number of criteria, in our case that'll be 6, and then divide that by number of criteria minus 1, or in IK, 6 minus 1, or 5. So let's take a look at what's really going on here. And um, here's our uh, WS vector. And remember where that came from. It's just C, the, cr the criteria matrix, times W, the weight vector. And so we took that matrix C, multiplied it by W, and we came up with these six numbers right here. So now what I want to do is I want to take the elements of this new vector, WS, and divide it by the elements in vector W. I'll put the spreadsheet out on our site so you can find that and take a look at what's really going on in here. But it's pretty simple. We're just taking the each element of W taking the inverse of that and then multiplying it by WS. So that's where this column is coming from. And I'm taking that consistency vector, which is the dot product of WS and 1 over W, and taking the average of that. Look at 6.610. That's lambda. That's our eigenvalue. And now I can calculate this index, this consistency index, which is the eigenvalue or lambda minus n divided by n minus 1. So when I take 6.610, subtract 5, and then, uh, or subtract, yes, subtract 5 and then divide by 5, I get 0 0.122. So now we're almost there, because really what I need now is this consistency ratio. I have one of the two numbers I need to calculate the ratio, and that's the consistency index. Now I can look up the consistency index for a randomly generated matrix. And that's been determined for us, and we can look those numbers up in our text, or it's, they're widely available online too. Um, and for n, number of criteria we have, the random index for that randomly generated 6 by 6 matrix is 1.25. So to calculate this consistency ratio to determine if the matrix we've, we've looked at is consistent, I'll take CI, and divide it by RI, and that'll give me the consistency ratio. 
Well, if that number is less than 0.1, then our matrix is considered consistent, which means that we didn't have any occurrences of combinations of pairs that would end up not making sense. And the example I gave was A is better than B, B is better than C, and so A should be better than C by that logic. And what this number is telling us is that our matrix is consistent. And so if we have that situation in the matrix, it's pretty likely that we've taken care of that. We have a consistent matrix. Okay, so that's the uh, consistency uh, ratio. So we'll want to check that. Now, if the consistency ratio is more than 0 0.10, we need to go back and look at some of our pairings again and think through those a little more carefully. So consistency ratio less than 0.1, equal to or greater than 0.1, probably ought to go back and look at some of those pairings. If it's exactly equal to 0.1 or if it's even close to 0.1, depending on the size of the matrix, um, it um, may not pay to go back and put a lot of effort in. We may be close enough that we can argue the matrix is, in fact, close enough to consistency to be consistent. So what have we just done here with this AHP process? First of all, we determined some appropriate weightings for our criteria. We found in the first part that durability was an important criteria, the most important criteria. What we just found out here was that our matrix is consistent. We determined that the matrix was consistent. We're almost done. Not quite, though. Now we know that our matrix is consistent. We have a good, solid cons um, consistency ratio. Now we need to decide which of the designs is best. Let's so say that we have three different designs. This object that we're designing, we have three objects, three options for manufacturing. We can weld plates that consist of this component together, we can rivet them together, or we can actually pay to have a casting made. And we're going to set up the same kind of matrix, this, this comparison matrix, this C matrix, except now we're doing it for our design alternatives. So I'm going to compare, do pairwise comparisons, of each of my different design alternatives. So again, I'll have ones on the diagonal, and I'm going to comp compare the plate weld design to the plate riveted design, and they're equal. So that's what the one is telling me. There's no difference between them. In terms of casting, the casting is going to be um, moderately more um, favorable to us uh, with respect to material cost. So I'm looking at material cost here. And so again, I have my A criteria and B criteria. And so I can see that when I'm comparing casting to plate welds, casting is moderately more um, favorable than the, the uh, plate welds. So again, I sum up the columns. I get 5 and 5 and then 1.67 under castings. And I'm going to follow exactly the same procedure as before. I'm going to normalize this comparison matrix by taking the sum of 5 and dividing it into each element in the column. So for example, I have 1 divided by 5 is 0.2. Again, 1 divided by 0.5 is 0.2. And then 3 divided by 5 is 0.6. And so that's how I'm determining the elements of this normalized C matrix. Now I take the average of the rows, just like I did before, and instead of that being called a weight vector now, it's actually called an alternative priority vector. So we're calling it a vector P instead of W now, because now we're actually looking at which of the designs is going to be best based on all of our criteria. And I'm going to repeat this process for manufacturing, reliability, durability, repairability, and time to produce. So I'm going to repeat this process five more times, and I'm going to come up with these values every single time. And I'm going to check to make sure every time that my matrix is consistent. So is the consistency ratio less than 0.1 for this case of material cost? I calculate the consistency ratio just like we did before and find that it's less than 0.1, and so this matrix is consistent. So now I would move forward with manufacturing cost, repairability, and so forth. When I get through, I'm going to have a set of six of these, a priority vector for each criteria that we're looking at. So this is the priority vector for material cost. 
I'm going to combine all of those priority vectors into another matrix. I'm going to have another 6x6 six six or a 6x3 a six matrix. So uh, here's material cost. These are the numbers I just derived for material cost, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and 0 0.6. When I do the analysis looking at the different alternatives for designs, whether it be rivets, welds, or casting, I'll get this set of numbers for manufacturing, and we don't really have those numbers. Uh, I took these numbers from your text, so we didn't go through actually a pairwise comparison for that. Um, so, but we're just follow, saving a little time by generating these numbers for repairability, durability, reliability, and time to produce. But you saw how we got the 0.2 for weld, the 0.2 for riveted, and the 0.6 for cast steel. Remember these numbers? Those were the weights that we got in the first part, where we took the uh, comparison matrix, normalized it, um, and then took the average of those ratings for each criteria. So that's those numbers. Those are the weightings. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this matrix and I'm going to multiply it by this particular matrix. But we've got to transpose the matrix in order to do the uh, calculation. And so this is what's called the final rating matrix, the uh, F sub R matrix. But I'm not quite through there. I have to, I have to transpose it. And again, as a reminder, there are the weightings that we got from the first part of this analysis where we were looking at all the different criteria. Now we're trying to decide which of these designs is the best for us. Okay, So I'm going to transpose that FR matrix, and when I do that, what it means, what a transpose means, is that I'm going to take the rows and make them columns. So whereas before I had 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and 0.6, in uh, a row, I've now made that a column. So I've transposed the matrix so that now instead of a 6 by 3, I have a 3 by 6. So I've turned, I've turned the matrix around so that we can get the multiplication done. And so there's the transpose. I took the um, final rating matrix, transposed it, and now I'm going to multiply it by these weights, which tell us the, the relative importance of those criteria that we had. When I do that, when I multiply this matrix by these weights, it tells me that riveting is should be the best design for me based on all of the criteria that we're looking at with durability kind of standing out above uh, the other five and uh, rivets uh, as opposed to the welding design or the casting design would be our first choice. So a lot of matrix algebra going on here. Um, I'll do another video that shows you how to do things like transpose and matrix multiplication, those kinds of things in Excel, because uh, I am going to ask you to be prepared to demonstrate this kind of thing uh, with, your, with your own design. Again, analytical hierarchy process. We look at the criteria, and then we look at our alternative designs collectively to get the best choice couple of notes about AHP. You can't use it indiscriminately. You have to be careful with its use. Uh, there are some problems with it, at least from um, people who've looked deeply into the theory of this, and uh, you can get uh, run into problems, especially if additional alternatives were to, were to uh, crop up as possible design alternatives. That will throw our analysis off and we essentially have to start again. So be really careful in using this. Uh, it's very powerful but again, it can't be used indiscriminately.